everybody, it's EK from EK Gorman Designs, and I am sneaking in here today with a reminder that the May Dusty Diamond and Twisted Circus Challenge over at Oddbar Art is still going on. You still have time to play. Today I am using image 530 uh, Twisted Circus and image 92 Frankenstein to create this fun themed, I don't know, card. I, I took the, uh, the podium or the circus platform and decided I wanted to do a little sideshow effect with Frankenstein standing on top of it. Uh, I love how the circus image is really like goofy fun looking and Frankenstein is in no way shape or form those things which I love the juxtaposition of that cutesy circus platform and then the like awesome art that is Frankenstein together. I pulled out my Copics to color today and I decided from the beginning that I was going to do a black and white image with a pop of color. So I started with my cool markers to give the, I can't believe my brain's just not working, to give the circus platform a nice light shading uh, of gray. Yeah, brain, brain's gone. It's May and in May life is crazy and hectic. Anybody with children in school knows this. The schedule seems to ratchet up but sitting here and coloring is always relaxing for me it's one of the reasons I color so much because it keeps the crazy away so I apologize for my brain being a disordered uh, chaos but regardless my C1 marker ran out and now you get to watch me get splooges all over the ink so I rubbed off a little bit of the excess ink and still remained with those little bit of excess bluegies but I think once the whole thing's colored only I'm ever really going to notice that I have ink bluegies right there in that bit of banner yes that's an official term bluegies when your marker spits out more ink than it's meant to and you have an excess come out it's a bluegie the platform of the circus stand I went with just slightly darker so whereas whereas the banner was done with the one two no one three and five cool marker the platform was done with the 3, 5, and 7, so they definitely belong in the same world, but there's a difference between them. I don't know why I felt the need to do black and white today with a spot of color, but it really felt, I don't know, there's that nostalgic circus feel that you have with an image like this, especially when we're talking about the sideshow and the sideshow where it wasn't politically correct in any way, shape, or form. And Frankenstein is the ultimate freak, let's all be honest. So I wanted to have that nostalgia look to my, my challenge piece today. So black and white really felt like the way to go with today's imagery. Just to capture that days gone by look of the whole thing. I don't know. I, I'm not certain I got it. I'm not certain I'm the only one who will capture that nostalgic look. But that's what I was going for here. For I... I kind of realized I wanted to change up how my grays were playing. And I started to reach for the warm grays, but I didn't want the grays to feel like they were in two different worlds. I definitely wanted the Frankenstein image and the circus stand to blend together. So instead of using the cools, I used the neutrals. The neutrals and the cool markers really line up nicely together. They, they belong like they're in the same universe. So I thought it was a nice way to differentiate the two different images that I spliced together without making it feel like it was two completely different worlds. So I pulled out my neutrals and I wanted his suit and his pants and his shoes and his hair to kind of almost be black feeling, but we all know I never color with black unless I want something to feel ultra harsh and arch ultra critical. So I went with the combination of four, six, and eight. And ironically, those three markers in neutral really read black with other colors surrounding it. Here it just kind of looks dark gray, but when I'm finished, I really do think I'm able to pop that black out. His bandages and his shirt just got some real light treatment. Nothing fancy in the world of shading, just enough to get some color on there so it didn't get left white. And then when it came to Frankenstein himself, oh, I'm sorry, to tie even more the images together, I threw a little bit of neutral down there on those banners since they were cloth. I thought it would work. Now for the pop of color. Frankenstein's supposed to be green. I'm sorry if you disagree with me, but Frankenstein is supposed to be green. So I pulled out the YG 91, 93, and 95 to give Frankenstein his 
just desserts. I don't know his color. I will say I wished I had pulled my colored pencils out and colored his skin with my colored pencils instead of my Copics. His detail on his face, the artwork on his face is so good that I really feel like I just underappreciated it with my markers. I really felt, I really think in hindsight I should have used my colored pencils to really accent the gorgeous artwork that is the Frankenstein face. I didn't really know what to do with the background and I didn't want to do anything spectacularly fancy today, so I used some crushed olive distress oxide and some hickory smoke distress oxide just to blend around the edge of this oddly shaped piece. I can't tell you what the width of it is, but I can tell you it's six inch high. So it's probably six inches by what, four inches approximately? And knew I was gonna put it on a six by six card frame. It needed just a bit of paper to really accent the whole theme of circus and Dusty Diamond and the whole get. So I pulled out this metallic green paper just to help bring out the green in it and trimmed off a quarter of an inch of it and then pulled out this piece of uh, printed acetate because it kind of had that diamond feel. It also to me kind of felt circusy in a way and trimmed an inch of it and they're of course both six inches pieces so I could put them off to the sides of each side of my Frankenstein image using a little bit of score tape and this is three millimeter tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs I put on the metallic paper and I wish I could tell you where the metallic cardstock came from it's so old I don't even remember anymore I've had it for years and I same with the acetate I just it's been around my stash forever. I'm trying to liquidate my paper stash these days. I don't think it's actually happening, but I did not use the full inch you can see on the um, acetate. I left about a half an inch on both sides and then didn't want you to actually see any of the score tape under the acetate, so I actually left it so it's flappable. So if you were to run your finger across the card, you could flap up the acetate, but it's secured underneath. I thought about doing something else on this card for a moment, but nah, he looked pretty cool on his own. If you haven't yet participated in the May Dusty Diamonds and Twisted Circus Challenge over at Oddbar Arts, make sure you stop by. I'll leave a link to the challenge in the blurb below. And until then, happy crafting.